From there, the gang go to Bronson's house. They murder, rape the, the maid in a particularly violent 15 minutes of the film, the first 15 minutes. Then Bronson arrives with his daughter. He's hit over the head. She's kidnapped, taken to a disused factory, raped, and in panic, runs through a plate uh, glass window and falls onto some railings and is impaled. Well, the rape scenes for the British version have been cut by four minutes by the British film censor James Furman, who had this to say. This is about as irresponsible as a filmmaker could be in the treatment of rape for purely commercial ends. This director is simply trying to stir up as much controversy as possible because he's in desperate need of a hit. The press in general have been pretty hostile. The Sunday Times. Winner appears excited only by the garish nastiness of Sunset Boulevard and the L.A. slums. The raped buttocks and bloody faces crudely savouring in gross close-up the relish of the revenger as well as the criminal. Time out. It's difficult to decide here which appeals to the nastier of audience instincts, the rape or the retribution. Rosalie Shan and the News of the World. Uh, women would be well advised to see this film. Its one redeeming feature is that it makes you, me, all women realize that it could indeed happen to us. The Daily Express. Dear God, what have we come to when the basis of an entertainment is that women should be portrayed as nothing more than a couple of lumps of living flesh to be manhandled, sexually assaulted, and slaughtered with an almost casual brutality? And The Times, a shoddy sequel to Michael Winner's thriller of 1974. Offensive and ridiculous uh, by turns, Winner directs in his customary slapdash manner while the dialogue is farcical. The director is, of course, Michael Winner, who's here. He's uh, one of Britain's most prolific filmmakers. This film is his 21st in 25 years. Can I throw another quote at you, Mr. Winner, uh, about from the censor? The censor says, the film was cut and shot in order to be sexually exciting, arousing and titillating as a piece of spectacular entertainment. Well, the censor's views on the quality of films are a little suspect, as he was a greatly failed television director himself, and out of work because he was so awful, and therefore took the job of film censor, which he does appallingly. Uh, <laughs> That's true. You, of course, read uh, a number of uh, poor reviews, because they are more exciting for well, television. Well, no, Michael, we tried to find some oh, good well, ones, and there aren't any, you know. Well, we'll really be happy ones. to send you at least ten well, very in the good major, reviews. Well, in the major newspapers, I'm afraid, that was a very... That's why we put in that example from Rosalie Shan, yes. uh, also, because that was the only goodish comment that we could find. Well, The Guardian was a rave, and uh, I, I, I called The well, Guardian a Well, I could go through it. Newspaper. Alexander Walker said it was over rape, if you remember, in the evening in well, the stand. Anyway. Well, let, let's not argue well, about that. Let's talk about the film itself. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether you're a little insensitive, because at the, at the moment in this country, there's a debate going on about rape. I've had some pretty horrifying cases, and surely as a filmmaker you should, should be aware of that. Well, of say. course I'm aware of it, and filmmakers and dramatists throughout history have always taken their subject matter from what is going on in life and made that into a dramatic story, and regrettably, uh, rape, which is nothing new, regrettably, is a terrible thing, but it does happen. It is very much on the minds of the public, and I see no reason why any subject should be excluded from drama. Uh, Why was it necessary to have the four extra minutes of what is a particularly violent Well, scene? I don't think there were four extra minutes. I think we're probably about th three minutes. That's still a lot. Uh, which is quite a lot. We never measured it, so I'm guessing. It's certainly no more than three. You can't say what is necessary, uh, because there is no necessity in drama. The dramatist uh, takes his own choice of what to show or not to show. I can only say that the totally uncut version of the film is being shown to audiences in France, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Spain, uh, Sweden, Denmark, etc. So the censors there have taken a completely different view, and also in America, where we were offered a totally uncut version of the picture if we wanted to take an X certificate. So the censor here is particularly uh, strong and believes that the adult population of Great Britain are in some way so feeble or stupid that he has to see things well, for them and right. cut them for that's, them. That's your view. Anna Rabin, um, who's a journalist, writer, broadcaster, we sent you along to see the film. Uh, was the censor wrong, in your opinion? Well, I regret to say that I don't find it possible to take Death Wish 2 seriously as a film. Um, I was the only woman in the theatre. There were 25 men and me, and the men were cracking up at the dialogue, let alone me. Um, I would have said to coin a phrase, that Death Wish 2 was Barbara Cartland with blood. Um, now, let me just expand on that one little bit. That's if a horror, are, horrifying thought, Barbara Cartland I with blood. I hope it is I'm a horrifying thought, because nothing else is going to horrify you. You are going to make a great deal of money, and as far as I can see, that's all you care about, 
and fine. That's your judgment on how you run your life. Isn't that really the point? You know, you said all this in Death Wish 1. What was the reason for making a second one, if not purely for money? Well, first of all, the reason for making a second one is I thought that the world had changed substantially since Death Wish 1. The mammoth rise in street violence that we had prophesied had come about. Death Wish 1 was on many of the 10 best of the year film lists in America, was treated very seriously, and I think society has now changed enough eight years later, which is a long time to wait for a sequel, to make a story of some relevance. And the audience is certainly finding that, because the picture is uh, considerably more popular even than the very successful Death Wish 1. I don't know where Anna saw it with 25 people. It must have been very early in the morning. Leicester Square Theatre at 10 past 1. Well, at 10 past 1, I accept that. I'm very on. sorry, Mr Winner, but I couldn't fit you into my schedule at any other time. Well, <laughs> 10 past 1 is a very flattering time to be on your schedule. Can I, can, can I throw a point to you, Anna, that, in fact, Michael Winner made in an article? He said that he believed the film could save women because it will bring home just how awful rape is. What would you like to say about that? I would like to say that I think we are talking about rape very gently and nicely. And in fact, the sequence, although it involves rape, also involves sodomy, which is something which is not comfortable if you love your partner and wish to be sodomized and is extremely and excruciatingly painful if you are already in a traumatic situation. So let us stop beating about the bush. It is a very nasty sequence indeed. It is, however, worse than nasty. It is dangerous. It is dangerous because it is coy. You cannot shoot a rape sequence which ever shows female genitalia in a film which is going out on general release because it would be described as pornographic. So what you're doing is you're selling an image of power and violence which is in fact worse than a real image. It's an acted image and therefore it is not realistic and therefore powerless and violent people and most powerless people are increasingly violent and increasingly desperate for a moment when they feel they have charge of everything, may try something. And I think that it's not a question of what the censor does or doesn't do with the film. It is a tragedy that a British filmmaker should make such an appalling piece of nonsense and it should receive general distribution and indeed as much attention as this film has received. This is the point I wanted to make to Michael Winner because I'm not going to, I'm going to leave for a moment the, the rape, just talk about how well or badly made the film is. I mean, I know this is a personal thing, but I can think of John Ford West and I can think of Hitchcock movies where violent scenes were in, which were much more artistically uh, dealt with. You uh, have turned the camera uh, uh, rather blatantly on a violent act. Uh, I mean, that surely shows a lack of imagination as a film director. Well, Can't you not make your point in any other way than to be sensational? Well, you can cut away to the curtains blowing in the window or the clouds scurrying outside. I don't think that any violent act that is shown is shown. And I don't see anything wrong today in showing what goes on in life. It was not done. But it uh, isn't like that in life. I'm sorry, well, you Mr. Well, you don't Wim, know, Annie. You've never isn't. been raped. Have you ever asked me? Well, uh, have you been raped? <laughs> Yes, I have, as a matter of technical interest. Is it of any relevance to your film? No. That is not how rape takes place. You're doing, dealing well, with a I'm reenactment. Sorry, we dealt with many police and psychiatrist researchers on this picture. All of whom wanted to make a buck. Well, Go on. I do, you want to make a buck. That's why you're here. You're making a buck. The police people we asked guided us very strongly in the matter of rape in Los Angeles, which is where the picture was set. It may interest you to know, in fact, that none of them were paid, so they didn't want to make a buck, unlike you. And their advice was followed in the details of how the thing was shot. Both but, but Personally, I think that's rather cheap, uh, this idea of buck or whatever. But I it mean, cannot I, make, I, you cannot shoot rape as rape is, am I not right? Because if you showed actually the penis entering the vagina, you wouldn't get distribution. Well, I accept that, that we have to... So it's not like it is. It's like well, as much as we can show a simulation, of it. And indeed, the... the simulation being shown here is less, is less realistic than what we filmed and which is permitted in all other countries, or nearly every other country, because the censor has made it even less realistic by cutting it, which I think is a mistake dramatically and indeed truthfully. I but I mean, isn't it the, 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 the centre of the story is not the 15-minute sequence well, which builds up to is, no excuse me the 15 minute o finite 15 well, it felt minute like opening about an hour, I must say a 15 minute opening sequence which includes the rape sequence that isn't the movie the movie is what happens to John Ker to Paul Kershey when he decides that he can Paul Kersey, when he decides he can take no more 
and he becomes, quote unquote, a vigilante. What is frightening about your film, excuse me, is not the rape sequence, which everybody's getting so very heated about, which is totally inaccurate, and anybody who ever has any, anything to do with it will know is totally inaccurate, God help them. What is frightening about your movie is it's so bad, and it costs $9 million. The, the dialogue is, is something which you wouldn't give an amateur dramatic group in, in Toxteth in the Marsh. The, 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 the acting is wooden. You have a, a wonderful presence in Bronson who I don't think has ever really been very well used. You have a dreadfully wooden Jill Ireland saying lines which in an English accent grate on the ear. Very uneven cinematography, Not very uneven well, music. Well, it's a bad movie. All right, well, you're most entitled to your opinion, but the public are loving it. The public are totally disagreeing with you in their millions in all the countries that it opens, which because is it's about been six or seven. No, not because it's been something. You cannot drag people in by selling them anything. The one thing we know for sure in cinema is that what gets people into a cinema is a thing called word of mouth. People come out of the theatre, their pal says to them, where did you go last night? I saw this. Was it good? Yes, they go. Was right. it good? No, they don't go. Right, word of We've mouth from Michael Winter is no word of mouth from Anna Rayburn about one final sentence. One final sentence is that it is obviously very much on Mr. Winner's mind to be sodomized. I hope it happens to him soon. Michael Winner, <laughs> Anna Rabin.